question. And it's something Amazon's very invested in with Rivian, our 100,000 uh, electric delivery vehicles for our last mile. But when you get into longer distances, uh, electric vehicles uh, are challenged until better batteries are developed and, and more infrastructure is established. So hydrogen is often uh, thought of it as a potential bridge to that. And hydrogen also potentially could be welcoming RJ Scarange, of course, founder and CEO of Rivian, JB Straubel, co-founder and CEO of Redwood Materials, both managing to scoop out some of the cash that is being offered by what is the Climate Pledge Fund, founded by Amazon. And from Amazon, we're welcoming Ross Rachie, director of Global Last Mile Fleet and Products. You sit in Illinois with seeing the manufacturing of Rivian products. What sparked Rivian? What really made you take on SUVs, trucks, and electrify them? Sure, yeah. So when you look at the transportation system today, we're at the, the very beginning of, of what needs to be a macro shift away from running our vehicles on, on carbon-based fuels towards running our vehicles in the earth industry. I think our partnership with RJ and Rivian is a great example. You know, we've been working to decarbonize our operations for years. To be honest, we've just been relatively underwhelmed with the electric vehicles that were available to us, you know, whether it's range, ergonomics, safety technology for the driver. Both of you, um, both with Redwood Materials and Rivian, got a very strong relationship with Amazon now. What about some of the other partnerships you're doing? I mean, JB, first and foremost, you've already struck a deal with Panasonic to a certain extent to look at the Gigafactory that you helped sort of inaugurate and build. Who are the competitors right now, Ed, in this space for Rivian? Yeah, it's interesting because Ford, you know, as you guys said, is an investor. I think Ford shares are on the move right now after that story dropped. They themselves are bringing a battery electric pickup truck, the electric F-150, to market. So not only are they uh, an investor in Rivian. Full start to other EV companies like Rivian could be valued at about $70 billion, right? Tesla is worth $770 billion, yep. which makes the $20 billion feel like some chump change when you compare it to the pure play, other pure plays in that respect. More conservative valuation. Absolutely. And the difference is as well is that they've actually got a, they've got two cars, as you say, in yeah. the market. Launchpad chauffeured no less by Jeff Bezos in a battery electric Rivian. They've crossed the gantry. You can see they're boarding into the capsule. We're tracking for liftoff around 10.30 Eastern time from Van Horn, Texas. Reaching speeds of Mach 3, G-forces three times that of Earth. And they're going to an apogee of around... Wow, is that William Shatner getting into that? I think that it is. is well, it's yeah. okay. Rivian, remember, Ford has a big slug of it. When If Ford sells its Rivian, it could add a Ford. It's true. Amazon also owns a good amount of Rivian I think as the well, auto, which is going to be coming public. Why did uh, the autos become more. a fascination? I was going to say, we're, we're five minutes into a new month, because and Tesla's we're all a, talking about because EVs. Because everyone I know. Also, obviously, Ford has a 5% stake in Rivian. Um, okay. They're going to build that lightning. Um, I just think it is an interesting story. You tell me at $1.2 trillion for Tesla in low single-digit global market share, what should any of these be worth? It's a really tough one to figure out. Well, is Ford worth what it's trading at, Brian Kelly? Is Ford maybe the ultimate play? Can I draw a line between what a Tesla has done and what Rivian's going to do? Just walk me through the dynamics of this particular business and its IPO. Yeah, certainly market analysts see it that way as the next Tesla. You know, it's an astonishing valuation for a company that has built less than 200 trucks so far, delivered less than 200, and will only build 1,200 this year. It's nice. But while it's easy to sketch out the story of Rivian becoming the next Tesla, it's very difficult to actually ramp up production like this. We forget. We really do. But Tesla struggled a lot before the company became a well-oiled machine. Producing electric vehicles at scale is tough. There's a reason even the major automakers have taken much longer than expected to launch their own electrics. Rivian is expected to price tonight in what could be the most anticipated IPO in the electric vehicle world since Tesla. Phil LeBeau joins us right now. He's got the details on this. And there is a lot of hype around this and a lot of money, too. There is a lot of money, Becky, and don't be surprised. They've already raised. We're going to show you shares of Amazon and Ford. Both of them have a stake in Rivian. Amazon owns 20 percent. Ford has 12 percent. Many people I've talked with guys have said, look, if you're looking at Rivian strictly as an EV uh, play, that's understandable. But you are discounting the impact and the potential growth with Amazon. They've got 100,000 electric delivery vans. Money where its mouth is in terms of finding partners and investing in those partners. Rivian uh, is the obvious example on a day like today, but here we have a firm also, Karen. Uh, and you got to wonder if this is sort of a signaling yes. a, ch a change in Amazon. I know. 
That's what I thought. I mean, that's a huge day for them between where a firm's trading and where Rivian is trading. Yeah, using that power, and I don't know if they're trying to, with Rivian, trying to uh, keep out the competition. Well, Guy, our movers today, we have a bit of a theme, and that is Rivian. We may not have uh, that on the board because, of course, it's not trading publicly yet for our to, to take a look at. But what we do have, some of the more recently IPO'd uh, and come to market uh, stocks, and you can see first up Toast uh, down 15 percent. It had soared on its first. I just want to point out we're getting another read now on Rivian indicated to open at 120. So it really does feel like we're bouncing around this 120, 125 level. Remember, uh, that stock priced at around $78 uh, a share. Uh, Katarina, where does this leave your view on technology stocks, like the big tech names, where if you haven't owned them, you've just got Rivian. Rivian would be the way to play. Guys, we will see the uh, shares start trading a little later on this morning. RIVN is the ticker symbol, and it'll be trading on the NASDAQ. Big day for Rivian, big day for the electric vehicle industry. Four. Ford oh. is at 79, and, G and the Honda is at 53, so it's right in there. So that's the one I'm kind of looking at. It's sort of interesting. Let's see how it trades today, though. Uh, same question, same same um, space that we're talking about, Greg? Shares once they start trading. And that's how a company like Rivian, it's only sold what it amounts to a handful of vehicles, can trade at the same market capitalization as GM. It's the mechanics of the market, people. Now, you could argue these institutions are insane. That given the inflationary nature of the economy, the Fed will have to raise interest rates rapidly, which will eviscerate Rivian's stock. In surging in their Wall Street debut, it was the biggest U.S. IPO since Alibaba back in uh, 2014, that made yesterday a very good day for Rivian CEO Robert Frank joins us now with more. Hey, Robert. Good morning, Joe. Using synthetic fuels and hydrogen-powered planes. Riviana Automotive has an extensive post-IPO to-do list. The electric vehicle company raised $12 billion earlier this week. Now it wants to build a standalone battery plant in addition to two new vehicle assembly factories that already were planned. Bloomberg's learned that Arizona, Michigan, and Texas. Okay, so Ford gets $15 billion from Rivian. They're not friends, by the way. Let me just make it very clear. They're not friends. They're not buddies, not pals. They're competitors. Ford may be the winner of this, but, but they got to sell. And they got to build battery plants, and they got to electrify. David, if you don't electrify, you are ice. A lot of the last hour talking about Volkswagen versus Rivian, the fact that you've got these stocks that are taking off in the United States, that people are concerned that we're heading for a kind of 2000-style bubble and then a burst. We had, the, st we had the, the financial stability report out today. We've got an idea of kind of how the authorities in the Eurozone see risk at the moment. Will the entire market be taken up by, you know, the Rivians, the Teslas, the Lucids, the Japanese EVs? Because that's what current valuations suggest. Are the current valuations wrong, Aunt? Um, I think they are wrong. I think they don't reflect the economic opportunity. Because I do think that even if we discount huge mega growth that these companies occupy, occupy the line operating in a vacuum you see what's happening with the valuations of rivian and lucid lucid is is close to surpassing general motors in terms of market cap when you see how much enthusiasm for the uh, the investors is out there when it comes to these ev companies and yet general motors is not getting the same love if you will from investors what do you think well, you know, I think, Phil, we're in terms of market valuation, now number three among U.S. automakers behind Tesla and Rivian. We're talking about the big three uh, being Tesla, Rivian, Lucid. Last night on Mad Money, uh, Peter Rawlinson called on the world to kick the fossil fuel habit. We cannot go on burning fossil fuels the way we're doing. Mankind needs to transition to sustainable mobility. And the technological machine. I love driving it. It was terrific. I got more blowback, negative blowback about that piece than I have in a long time. And I'm going to quote my daughter, who very rarely blasts me. She said, Dad, you are a salesperson for Rivian. Give me a break. Uh, I'm a bad salesperson for, for uh, Lucid. Give me a break. And here's the problem. Vivian, let's get to Phil LeBeau on the news line. Phil. Sarah Ford has confirmed that it has dropped plans to jointly develop an electric vehicle with Rivian. Remember, when Ford made its initial investment in Rivian back in early 2019, the plan was for Ford and Rivian, 
while they have their own separate development of electric vehicles taking place, to also jointly develop an electric vehicle. Uh, and as we reported, as the Rivian IPO was working its way through the process and they ultimately listed uh, last week, it was unlikely that they were ever going to go forward with the plan to do a... Names like Tesla or areas like Bitcoin or the meme stocks or Rivian, those are bubbles. Uh, with those are names that we don't invest in in our nine portfolios and our $7 billion that we invest for clients. Those aren't names that we're going we're gonna to chase. I love those names, by the way, because with so much focus on that, I think people kind of forget how great the, the overall stock market is. So we were at Lucid earlier this week, and until yesterday, owning Rivian was like owning Secretariat. Now, though, Ford has announced that it's doubling the electric vehicle capacity it has, and they'll have the chips to ramp up the production thanks to a special deal they made with Global Foundries. At the same time, we just learned that Apple wants to be up with the EV. They were the first really big mover in that space. Now, Rivian is not the first. They've got a good looking truck um, that looks a lot like the Lightning. Uh, I think the Lightnings will be delivered before the Rivian trucks. Mm -hmm. um, but nonetheless, I think that uh, when you look at the lack of that dealer network uh, that takes the bulk of the profit out of that vehicle, Scott, I think the Lightnings will be delivered before the Rivian trucks. Mm -hmm. um, but nonetheless, I think that uh, when you look at the lack of that dealer network uh, that takes the bulk of the profit out of that vehicle, Scott, as well as the pension issue that puts more expense on top of the vehicles that GM, Ford, Volkswagen, for that matter, make, I think you get the idea that um, this is... That's trying to uh, to ramp production of an electric um, sport utility vehicle in, uh, in pickup truck. Um, I think the bigger question is is what are the you know the traditional OEMs doing? I mean, just out today, I think uh, news that GM bought a stake in a end of next year uh, coming out of there. I also want to show you Ford, Rivian, and General Motors. And why am we showing you all three of these companies? Because all of them have electric pickup trucks that are either have already started deliveries in the case of Rivian with the R1T you've got the F150 Lightning from Ford and then you've got General Motors uh... Jim has a bunch of them uh, but nonetheless uh, Jim made a great trade on Rivian on the put side and jumped on that I rolled my Rivian call spread down Frank to the 120 150 um, so yeah uh, lightening up on some of these names in particular out of the stock Frank and into call spreads that have a lot less risk attached. There's always something to do. I mean, we're short Rivian, Peloton, Stitch Fix, and um, so you can make it, you can take advantage of speculative markets as well. You don't have to be prey to them. Um, and then the last one is, I think, and I think Rebecca would agree here, you just want things that are uncorrelated, right? And something that's really uncorrelated rounding valuation. Um, Rivian in the long term, yes, it is ultimately going to challenge Tesla because it is introducing the type of vehicle right now that is really not significantly available uh, in, in the environment where you're looking for the SUV, you're looking for that last mile fleet, you're looking for the EV pickup truck. So I think at, at some course... Information's piece that Amazon had concerns about Rivian's batteries. Yeah, um, you know, look, um, all electric vehicles um, might not fare as well in colder weather. Uh, we think this is a known issue. Um, it's tough to know based off um, the, the, the one report. Um, I, I would assume that this is something that the company and Amazon are both well aware of and working to. Tesla, don't you? And I think Lucid has the best chance on this list. Rivian may be away from it. Rivian's on the list. But now that the target of an SEC investigation, the merger with a SPAC to come public, suboptimal. The cannabis and gaming stocks used to have a lot of promise, but both industries have become crowded. The federal government isn't giving them the supply they need. I'm just going to lay the gauntlet down. I think Jim's tired of hearing, do you know that Rivian is now bigger than Ford? <laughs> hey, do you know that, that Tesla's 17 times big? No! Farley's a fighter. Judge, he's not going to just say, yeah, you know, I, I guess well, we were once a great company. And, uh, that's, why no! you, that's why you like him so much. We're less than yes. 30 minutes away. Argo AI, autonomous driving technology company, not to mention the position in Rivian. What a windfall. The newly public electric vehicle maker, which is now worth $12 billion, their stake alone. 
Now, earlier today, we got a chance to speak with Jim Farley as part of the CNBC Investing Club's regular conference call. Now, if you want to see the Investing Club's... Um, it's increasing competition from the likes of Rivian, Lucid, and traditional automakers who are dramatically increasing their investments in electric vehicles. And there's other factors, such as these semiconductor issue, uh, chip shortages and supply chain issues, yeah. which we see lingering well into 2022. But the first one you mentioned. OK, let's dial back our expectations, not just for Rivian, but for other companies in terms of how quickly they'll be able to ramp up production of EVs. Nadine, how, how does Ford trade these days? If the Teslas and Lucids and Rivians of this world were to collapse in value, not saying that, that, that they will, but if they were to, would that bring Ford down with it or would Ford be a beneficiary of that? Hey, Pete, be real quick here, but you no longer own a position in Rivian, correct? Right. No, I got out of that. I think we talked about it on the show. But also, I'll just add real quickly, Scott, if you don't mind, the demand for copper is huge because of the EV space. And that is what's driving this. Take a look at what Freeport McMoran's been able to do. That's why I continue to roll out to some extent or at least lengthen that tail. Tom, we saw uh, Rivian there. I've got to mention that in the electric pickup trucks that are exciting. If I want to make a decision to buy a Rivian today or, or order a Hummer or order a Lightning, how long am I waiting? Oof. Or did it get ahead of itself? So we're, we're not in print on Rivian, and so I don't want to make a recommendation on that stock here. Um, you know, but at, at this point, you know, we're really gauging sentiment around this group. And so with a, a bunch of these startups, you know, you really have to watch them, uh, you know, begin to ramp up to get comfortable that the, the products are moving forward. Vehicle makers with Tesla hitting new records and Lucid and Rivian both going public. But all three stocks are down so far this year, with Lucid and Rivian seeing the biggest declines. Rivian's down 35 percent just since Jan 1. But 2022 could bring big changes with major EV launches on deck, including from some of the legacy automakers. Here now with the names to watch is Bank of America auto analyst John Murphy. John, it's great to have you. Let's start with the stocks. percent today. Neo is down 14 percent. Even Tesla's lower. Um, and Rivian's really struggling to kind of produce at scale. They just had to do a little bit of an about face on price hikes that would be for people who had already placed an order. What does all that tell you about their strength in this market? Yeah, I think uh, Rivian especially is in the right spot, right? The United States, 40 years in a row, they're number one on top. Tesla's got in for them. Rivian's there with backing from Amazon. But you just have to note something here. You know, E450, the Lightning, has 250,000 orders. Uh, Rivian, a little less. Tesla Cybertruck, whatever you think of the looks, they've got over 1.2 million orders. So the real question is, how Andrew, they are slowly improving for Rivian. We had a chance to go inside the company's plant in Normal, Illinois. That's in central Illinois. It's an old Mitsubishi plant that the company has had for a couple of years. They have completely gutted it, added three different assembly lines in there where they're making the R1T, that's the electric pickup truck, the R1. Tesla and say there's an equal problem or do you look at Tesla and say these guys are going to be the winners in all of this they are miles ahead yeah. of everybody else how do you read well, from one to the other well first of all I mean the Tesla in terms of the stock story of Rivian according to David there's also 13 to 15 million other Rivian shares being unloaded by unnamed investors so in the case of Ford you remember when this was a hot stock, when Rivian was exploding out of the gate? People said, wow, what a great gain for Ford. Take a look at what's happened with Rivian shares since that IPO, when it got up to about $175 a share.
So where does the stock go from here, Dan? What do we do if we own Rivian? Maybe bought it right after the IPO. It was 176 bucks a share at one point. Maybe people are still just kind of hanging on and hoping. Uh, what do they do? Look, I think in these types of markets, you got to look who are going to be the one standing at the end, the winners. Their cash right now, they have. It's not Tesla's everywhere. I've mm. now seen a handful of Rivians on the road near where I live. Yep. I've seen, I've just saw my first in-person real life Lucid Air driving mm. around town. I've seen Hyundai Ionics around. How, how much is that competitive environment mm. going to be a real headwind for Tesla in the coming mm. months? Mm. Well, it, it, of course that's I want you to look at some of the prices. On July 20th, a Rivian truck sold for $97,500. There it is. It had 142 miles on it and launch edition badging on the steering wheel. And check out this one, a launch edition quad motor Rivian that went for 10,000 more. It sold for $107,500 in California. It had just 75 miles on it. Insane. But it's not limited to just retail. We heard from Ford and Rivian also uh, laying off workers beyond meat last night in its earnings report talking about consumers trading down uh, to cheaper meats and that impacting that company. It's laying off about 40 workers. And then also in the tech space, you're hearing, you know, from Alphabet, Amazon, Twitter, you mentioned Robinhood, Coinbase. You know what? Even the same thing can be said about, about Rivian. The electric vehicle maker with a stock that's been rebounding like crazy, too. This one will benefit from the Inflation Reduction Act because there are huge vehicle subsidies, sub electric vehicle subsidies in it. Now, I do prefer t uh, Tesla. We're going to be talking to Oshkosh later. They've got, they're, benefit they're benefiting, too, but they're on cars or really EV makers because you had one of them, Rivian, yes. reporting after the bell yesterday. Disappointment when it comes to its EBITDA outlook. It's going to be a bigger loss than expected. So even though they kept that production guidance steady, the stock is down. Oh, it actually is put in positive territory. Wow. I stand corrected. One and a half percent higher <laughs> wow. on the day. And it also... Uh, what about the other pure play EV names like Rivian? Are, are they finding it harder either because of supply chain issues or because of Lots more EV uh, competition coming on from the traditional players. Are they finding it harder relative to Tesla? Well, the supply chain is really an issue for these new companies. Tesla has years of experience. That is one of the... Good things going on with Stellantis. People love the Rivians. I can go on and on, right, that the Taycan outsells the 911 now. Um, people have options, and I think if you look at relative valuation, and the credibility of all these other vehicles coming to market, you know, I think Tesla will likely underperform over the next few years, and people are better off picking up another horse. You're part of the market, guys, then if you look at Rivian or at, certainly at Lucid. Lucid is, is clearly a high-end luxury EV maker at this point. Rivian, still higher priced vehicles than what you're getting with the Model 3 and the Model Y. Yep. Interesting, Phil. Uh, we'll see with gas prices. They, they, the, uh, the streak ended, I guess, and, and they were either flat or a little higher. Uh, yes. The past, the, the I think it's going to be 22, 23,000. As you take a look at shares of Rivian, it's down about six or seven percent pre-market. I'll be interested to see how it trades today. That seems about right, given the fact that this is a recall. While it is huge and it is not a good, good, good piece of news for Rivian investors, they expect this recall to take about 30 days to check and if there needs. To Number one selling vehicle in the industry, and Rivian has a tremendous first mover advantage. I mean. Chevy has a EV Silverado mm -hmm. that's coming out that's incredible, but it's still not coming until late next year. Ford has the F-150 Lightning. 
just starting to be available right, right now, but Rivian does have a first mover advantage. They have yep. about a, a 90,000 backlog for the um, RT and the, uh, the RT1. And what about these other names? I mean, you have Ford and GM and Neo and Rivian. And are there other names that you like better that think will leave Tesla reeling? In the meantime, Tesla was just voted number one car in Germany in September. But tell me, I mean, where who's chomping at the bit well, here? Well, Consumer Reports ranks them, I think, second to last in quality. And what car in Europe ranks them dead last in quality? They rank last in autonomous driving. But to your question, we've always said we like BYD. That is the company we play. We will play from an electric vehicle perspective. We said that for years, and I think we've been proven right thus far. Right, understood. And I am curious to hear, um, just for Tesla shareholders, and this is the question I think. about this company and the path forward to profitability. All right, so Rivian's higher. So too is Beyond Meat up about 2.5% uh, here in the after hours. Uh, third quarter adjusted EBITDA loss, 73.8 million. Uh, that's bigger than the estimated loss of 58.1 million, but they are targeting cash flow positive uh, within the second half of 2023. So maybe that's why there's some optimism. Day, saying they've reached 100 cities with the EDVs that Rivian is producing for them. And as you go into 2023, the question will be, as the IRA goes into effect, what will the uh, tax credit do for how Amazon is looking at their purchases here? And is that going to incentivize them to accelerate uh, their purchases from Rivian? Yeah, interesting to see a, a thousand vans. Well, look, I mean, I haven't seen Rivian's balance sheet in a while, their income statement, but they're driving cars there and I see them. So they must be must have positive revenue. Fisker still has not. Uh, I really haven't seen the car. I don't know much about it, to tell you the truth. I will say this. I mean, you mentioned some of the other. 